Hello, hello. It's so good to see you, Dr. Robillard. You too, Siobhan. Thank Long you. time. <laughs> Long time. Listen, I'm Siobhan Sarna. Hello. If you aren't familiar with our work over at SIBO SOS, which stands for SIBO Save Ourselves. Um, I'm thrilled to meet you. I have a very special guest today, and that is Dr. Norm Robillard, who has a little bit of a, of a, I'm going to start over, a big voice to share with everybody um, with a twist on things. He has an approach that has worked for so many people, and it's different. It really is. And he has graciously created a masterclass for free for everybody. And you are, if you're on our mailing list, you've received it in an email. If you want to come to the media section of our Facebook group, it will be there and you can watch to your heart's content. He's also done two other masterclasses for us, which we're putting on sale for a two for one price, which is not so great oh um and it's a guide through his fast track diet and a way to eat in a low fermentation way and it's a lifestyle don't get me wrong and he's gonna talk about that but it's not necessarily the antibiotic route so there it is is that an appropriate way to get started dr so. <laughs> okay. makes good sense to, to me see you it's good to see you could you me just too. describe uh First of all, you have a Facebook group that I know is super active and super smart. And what quickly can you define what the fast track diet is? Sure. The fast track diet is a three pot system. So there's three pieces, right? One is limiting hard to digest, but fermentable carbohydrates. That means carbohydrates that bacteria can ferment yeah. in the gut. So you want to limit those. And there's a system to do that, right? It's a calculation, this FP calculation. Uh, but this table's in the books. The what does FP program. stand for? Fermentation potential. There it is. Okay, the thanks. Potential for these carbohydrates to be fermented by bacteria. And so this table's in the fast track digestion books. There's something like 1,100 foods in the fast track diet mobile app. And that we now have a back end of that. So we can, we keep adding foods now. So it's kind of open-ended. Uh, so that's a lot of fun, a lot of tools there. So that's one piece, limiting, figuring out how to limit th this, these high to digest carbs, the fructose, lactose, resistant starch, fiber, and sugar alcohols. So those are the basic groups and, and polymers of fructose and so forth. But it's a system. So you don't need to know how many of those are in every food you pick up. You just need to know the FP value. So we call it, uh, the slang, I guess, is symptom potential instead of FP. That's, that's really describing what it is, though. So that's perfect. Yeah. And that's one piece, right? The other piece is identifying and addressing potential underlying or contributing causes. And everybody wrestles with these. I work with a lot of people untangling these. There's 25 or 30 basic ones. And you, and you want to really rule out the ones that don't apply to you so you can focus on the ones that are important. So you're not working on things you don't need to work on. That's the second piece. The third piece is pro-digestion behaviors and practices. So it's not just what you're eating. It's when you're eating, it's how you're eating, how you're preparing foods and storing them and how you're consuming them. So there's a lot of things you can do to improve your uh, digestion. Um, so it's important for everybody, especially for people with more carbohydrates or on a plant-based diet. So that third piece can be important. And then the, the, uh, the approach also has, uh, you know, a number of like troubleshooting sections and things like that. What if, what if you're still having some challenges? I have spoken oh. to one of your admins. Was it Judy? Uh, yes. Yes, Judy. 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 Lovely, lovely woman. Yeah. Wonderful. who um, had chronic SIBO. She doesn't have an ileocecal valve, as I recall, that right. she freely discusses. So I'm not like revealing something too right. personal. And she um, really has had tremendous results with the mm -hmm. fast tracked diet. And that's right. It's fast tracked, not yeah. track. Right. So like your digestive tract. Right. So just to be clear, because it's a little bit confusing, you know, depending on how the pronunciation goes. Um, and she, it's just beautiful to hear her results and how she's just uh, harmoniously brought this lifestyle into her world mm -hmm. and made it like, it's a lot easier to feel better and do this 
equation uh, with the foods than to keep right. stumbling. You know, you know, when you find something that works for you, like by all means, yeah. it, you know, you embrace it, hopefully, and you go forth and conquer. Right. And that's what she's done. And there's so many other people that have done that. And right. even if you bring in some yeah. of the factors. Yeah. In Judy's yeah. case, by the way, she's yeah. a registered nurse, a retired registered right. nurse. Uh, she had that surgery some time ago. She's kind of struggled with issues for a long time. So when when this worked for her, she really reached out, and that's how she ended up becoming an admin for the group. So um, she's she's just amazing, as are the other admins as well. Absolutely, we love them too. <laughs> so I, what I wanted to do, and it'll take me just a second, um, is to pull up the masterclass that mm, I want to encourage ahead. everybody to watch and share the screen. Mm. I also wanted to say that. You know, somebody yesterday was in Facebook groups, as it happens, you know, expressed a sincere concern that um, people were pushing diets literally down their throats. And I was like, whoa, uh, we definitely don't do that. You're providing an opportunity to have a new thought pattern and have the science behind it. Everything you do is evidence based. So I have no agenda. I'm giving you guys another option. Just a little disclaimer, because I'm super sensitive about that right now. Um, but yeah, I'm and, excited. And people will notice in that presentation, there's a lot of links to studies that that uh, depend on a whole variety of diets. So yeah. low carb, keto, elemental, there's a, uh, some links in there and other talks I've given to, to a whole variety of diets. Yeah, it's not one. It's not one thought one it's not a one-hit wonder well looking at studies on all of these different diets you can learn different parts of what is going on here and what helps exactly mm -hmm. exactly how fast would someone probably see a result mm. yeah that's a great question um it, it really depends um it, it depends on the person and their level of compliance, how significant their, their problem or problems are. Um, but also you can look at it by uh, the type of symptoms. Um, simple heartburn, burning behind the breastbone, um, bloating and excessive gas and belching. Uh, when I work with people, those are the first ones that I see improvements with, the gas and the bloating and the reflux, the simple heartburn type reflux. Um, in a matter of days. So, and if you don't see that, you know, you're doing something wrong and you need to say, what, you know, what's going on here? Why, why isn't this working? Um, there are more challenging symptoms, uh, constipation, these methanogens are quite stable. So you need to do a lot of things to kind of nudge that forward. Um, laryngopharyngeal reflux, uh, irritation in the throat, feeling like you have a lump in the throat, a persistent cough, uh, asthmatic type symptoms. Um, plugged eustachian tubes, those, that type of tissue irritation does also take a long time. So I've worked with so many people that have that and it's not an instant fix. You have to be really diligent. You need to get things under control, stop all the reflux and then hang on <laughs> and just trust that it will work in time. And it, it does take time. So, you know, but it, it does work. Mm -hmm. Norm, do you have the link pulled up by any chance? The link to what? Do your masterclass. I thought I had it pulled up. Oh, um, I can find it. It's just going to take another second or two. The link that I have, I believe, goes to a place where you have to sign up. So is that okay? Right? All right. Well, you know what, guys, I'm going to do is I will. It's free. Um, I think you have to enter your like make a password. I honestly can't remember because we're working on a, a huge event right now. So we're a little bit distracted, but I wanted to make sure we got norm in today because we've been planning it for months. Um, but anyway, we'll get it to you. Uh, we already got it to you. As a matter of fact, if you're on our email list, it'll be here in the media section. And Norm, are, do you want to- Oh, you know what? What? Um, I what have an idea, Dropbox? Siobhan. Go to your Dropbox. I have an idea. No. Oh, okay. I can, can, can I share yeah. the PowerPoint? Let, let me do that. All right. Okay. I'm telling my team to please- um, Okay. Oh, great. Perfection. Hold on. I'm viewing Norm's screen. Perfect. Thank you, sir. But anyway, we'll post it in the Facebook group. We'll post it in Norm's Facebook group and hopefully go back and look at the email from uh, Siobhan Sarna, SIBO SOS. All right. So this yeah. is, um, so it's a beautiful if you, want to drive, you can just tell me when to advance. Oh, to just go ahead and just take us on a tour.
So you do a lot of great definitions. The graphics are pretty too. And yep. <laughs> um, thank Ria Tanaka for that. Thank you, Ria. So the reason why we ended up doing this free masterclass was because um, I just did a summit on the microbiome, which many of you um, watching this right now were with me on. And I wanted to get Norm's voice out there to you because it was a little bit different. And I wanted to give you as many options as possible. So just keep scrolling through like we're going through a magazine or a, a scrapbook, Norm. Yeah, so everyone right. Definition of what dysbiosis is. One of the unique things about this presentation is we instead of a lot of times, and I've done this with you too, and I write about it in my books and, and on blogs I've written, and I present it at uh, the Seattle meeting where I saw you last uh, spring, Siobhan, yeah. uh, 2019 spring. But um, we tend to talk about SIBO a lot and it's because it's very popular. It's, it's, there's a test for it. A lot of people know they have it. But I, this is really just a reminder that there are different types of dysbiosis as well. SIBO is the best known. But yeah, this small, is beautiful. That's what I loved about it. Overgrowth, right? Yep. Satish Rao's work. Uh, Lebo, and, and let me advance the slide to show you, if people have this PowerPoint, they can click on this Farmer 2014 study, Ringel Kalka 2015. And these two studies are really interesting because this is where I got this idea that Lebo was a real thing in IBS. They took a whole population of people with IBS and they used smart pill technology to look at the acidity in the early part of the large intestine and found that it was much more acidic indicative of a bacterial overgrowth. So there's direct evidence, both of those studies for LIBO. And then uh, IMO is of course, um, you know, th this intestinal methanogen overgrowth was just broken out from, from methane predominant SIBO because they're not bacteria. Um, so, and, and this presentation really just kind of go, goes into the diagnostics for each of these um, what can you do? And and CIFO and LIBO are kind of difficult to diagnose right now because they're a little more in the research realm. Uh, Satish Rao's work, excellent, but he has to culture the small intestine for CIFO. LIBO, you would need- Wait, some, Which means you, know, you have to do an endoscopy, which no one wants to do really. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, for invasive. LIBO, you'd need to use that smart pill technology and you need to find a teaching hospital to do it. So, but EMO and SIBO, that's pretty standard uh, with breath testing. So, uh, but- the, the good news is there are things that you can do to impact all four of these, because don't forget, all of these organisms need to be fed. And even IMO, intestinal methanogens, they feed on hydrogen. You're like, okay, well, that's not in my diet. Yes, but the carbohydrates are that feed the bacteria that produce the hydrogen that the methanogens consume. Uh, and the CIFO consumes simpler carbs. So you can base diet and, and other strategies around the behaviors of these or different organisms where they are, um, but also this whole idea of a, of a molecular food chain that goes from carbs to all the way to hydrogen and methane and hydrogen sulfide. Yeah. One, th one thing I wanted to ask you about one of my favorite statistics, how much, how many carbs have you seen be able to produce how much gas? So in terms of mm -hmm. bloating, mm -hmm. if I just have like three crackers, <laughs> yeah. how much bloating potential is there for that? Well, right. So a lot. That's the amazing thing. You know, I've been studying this stuff for 17 years now, uh, starting with my own chronic acid reflux. And when I went on a very low carbohydrate diet and saw how much my acid reflux and some IBS symptoms improved, I knew there was something there. But as I dug into the microbiology of it and came up with this idea that carbohydrates were overfeeding blooms of microbial growth, I started looking at some of the microbiology and it turns out that just 30 grams, just a little over an ounce of unabsorbed carbohydrates, in other words, FP carbs that reach the intestine where there's bacteria, bacteria can ferment that just one ounce of carbohydrate and make 10 liters of hydrogen gas. 10, 10 liters. liters. So that's a lot of gas. Now, if it's converted yeah. to methane, that condenses the amount of gas. This is molecular stoichiometry there but uh, it's still a lot of gas. So when people are bloated and, and belching and uh, or distended, you know, there's a lot of gas there and it doesn't take many carbs to do it. So the, the important thing is not to eat too many, try to eat the right kind, the easier to digest ones where we've talked about jasmine rice, but even that for some people, if they're struggling, they might need to kind of watch that a little bit, go lower carb, 
and use these behaviors and practices we talked about and possibly some supplementation as well to optimize digestion, get those carbs out of the gut so not too many of them persist, more go into your bloodstream, you don't overfeed them and you don't get too much gas and you'll have fewer symptoms. That's, that's the strategy. That is the strategy. Why don't you scroll through a couple more of the slides? We have posted it in the Facebook Live or in the Facebook group. This one just um, talks about the, the microbes in the gut and, oh, cool. and the importance of these two groups, Firmicutes and Bacteroidetes, because those are up to 90% of our microbes. The other ones are listed to the side because they're in smaller relative numbers in most people. So uh, gut. So I just wanted to kind of get that up there. It's a fun area to dig into, but maybe in a different lecture. Uh, this puts the, the diets on kind of a continuum of how much fermentable material there. And Siobhan, we've talked about vegetarian diets. So plant-based, higher fiber, higher prebiotics. Some people thrive on that diet. I'm yeah. not poo-pooing that diet at all, but there are more fermentable carbs. So if people have a lot of symptoms, that's kind of the zone where you have to take a look at what you're consuming and, and do you have excess fermentation going on? And the other end of the spectrum is fasting. You're not eating anything. Uh, and so the fast track diet is layered over those because it is just kind of a point system. You can use it on a plant-based diet. You can use it on a carnivore diet or fasting. You, you don't really need it, but I'm just saying that it does span the spectrum of the other diets. Okay. Anyway. Keep rolling us through. Cause I know we, we have a limited time here. Um, and I want to make sure yeah. we cover a few more. See, this is very interesting. I love yeah. this slide. So just, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I see the next slide and the previous slide in my yeah. view. Yeah. That's, that's the, this is the one I meant. And then I also talked about, you know, to, to make a point with people, how do you, how to manage this? You know, I talked about five different families of carbohydrates you have to watch out for, but resistant starch and fiber is controversial. So I th thought, what is not controversial? Fructose, lactose, and sugar alcohols. We know that a lot of people struggle uh, and, and have a lot of digestive health issues, tons of literature. Most people and doctors say, yeah, go ahead, limit those. They're not good for you anyway. Take them out of your diet. You don't need them. So it's not controversial. So, but I do spend some time talking to people about the resistant starch and the fiber, because there is a uh, prevailing idea of, out there that we need these to feed our microbiome. We're starving it. But I've given some lectures now, and I've talked to you about it before, Siobhan, that these are fermentable carbohydrates. And for people that are struggling, I think initially, at least, you have to watch out for these too. And it's consistent with the NICE guidelines in Europe. Use Cochrane reviews. They will tell you the same five groups that I target in the Fast Track Digestion Series. They say, for IBS, you need to avoid them. For instance, textbook of primary acute care medicine, same five. Uh, Hunter found that just a fiber-free diet would reduce gases tremendously. And then this, uh, uh, I don't know how to pronounce right, it. And that's not saying don't eat fiber. That's just yeah. saying be aware of it so you can strategize. Norm, we have to keep going yeah. through here. Yep. None of these are absolutes. It's just limit, not eliminate. All right. It's, right. Bring it into consideration. Yep. So and then, right. isn't and this cool, you guys? What's that? I just am so very excited about this class. Oh, excellent. Okay. Because I can't see those comments right now. Hi. Okay. Um, Yep. So, and then I went through so, and, and talked through in the lectures, if they click on the lecture and listen to it, because there's a lot more information than what's in these slides. But I talked to what a reasonable diet approach would be for SIBO, for CIFO, for LIBO, right? Because you can't use rifaximin anymore for LIBO. It's not active in the large bowel. So, so what are you going to do? Uh, and for IMO. And so there's dietary things based on that food chain idea. You want to interrupt that food chain, but then it's like, what else is kind of unique about these, these organisms, you know, like uh, the fungi, uh, they like the simple sugars, you know, so you really have to watch out for that. There's observational studies that show that both fungi, gut fungi and the methanogens, they're more common in people that eat a higher carb diet and less prevalent in people that eat more fats and proteins. So I think that is, again, something to look at for the methanogens, IMO, and for CIFO, more fats and proteins. Um, and by the way, just switching down to uh, IMO here, uh, there was a paper, a study in 1927 that showed that people that had constipation, if they just loaded them up with fats, it was very therapeutic. 
Oh my gosh, that's 1927. Great. Yeah, it was a woman that led that study, and uh, she was very successful. So, so we we tend to forget things that happened a long time ago. Right, and it's not trendy. I'm going to have you stop sharing if you don't mind. It's oh. not trendy, guys. This isn't the new Candida. This is real, uh, and um, they've been thinking about it since well, I'm sure before the 1927. But it's exciting that yeah. you know we're able to make so much project progress mm -hmm. so recently. You know, Dr. Pimentel came up with his protocol in 2006. Mm. So, I mean, if you feel like, hey, ha this happened to me. Hey, how come I've never heard of this? It must not be real because, you know, I'm cynical. Mm. And because I, you know, consider myself well versed. Ha ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it happens. Yeah. Listen, we have a question from Grace, then we need to wrap. Um, mm -hmm. But I have a question about psyllium. Uh, is it a fiber? And is goat yogurt and sheep feta considered lactose? And if, if she had more questions about food, where could she go um, to get more information? Hmm. Well, you can find uh, blogs and things that I've written on the fast track, uh, I'm sorry, on the digestivehealthinstitute.org and also by joining a fast track digestion official Facebook group. Uh, I post on there a lot and there's, um, I don't know, we're up to close to 11,000 people posting awesome. a lot as well. Awesome. Um, so there's some places to look, uh, as far as what was the fiber, was it psyllium or yes. um, psyllium? Yeah. It's a complex, uh, like a cellulose type fiber, very, very long, complex and tough to digest. So some people don't have a lot of bacteria in the gut to break it down and won't have a lot of symptoms from it, but it depends on your microbes. Some people have microbes that will break down cellulose and, and related highly tough and complex fibers and can have some symptoms from it. So, um, but it's probably one of the least invasive ones that you could try if you were looking for um, an option where let's say you had methanogens and you heard, okay, well, sometimes adding a little bit of fiber um, might be helpful. Maybe that would be one you could try. Partially hydrolyzed gour gum. Gour gum, sure. It helps um, with constipation. You know, just sure. use it cautiously. thing that's nice about diet is you can kind of play around with it. You know, that's right. It, that's it the DIY things. aspect of this. Just back up. It's not working. Stop doing that enzyme. Stop trying this supplement and try something different. You know, you can, you, most of these things are not uh, going to hurt you that much and you can, you can play around a little bit. And I think that's very liberating. Norm, we really appreciate you. Thank you so much. I have a heart out because I have to take a friend of the doctor's appointment. And by the way, we have just posted Norm's uh, free masterclass for you in the Facebook group on our end. Uh, you do have to give the, you know, email, I think, and like, I think, I'm not sure if you're going to have to use a password or not, but believe me, it's like three minutes and it's fa fabulous information. Free, 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 free. Yeah. Free, free. Yeah, I went through free, the process free. and I, I was able to access the PowerPoint. Pretty okay, quickly. great. So it seemed, yeah, and it seemed you're different. even getting the PowerPoint for free too, guys. So this is just a yeah, gift. And, and we people, love you. that has links to a lot of these yeah. studies in it. So when you get the PowerPoint, click on the link, you can read the original study. Awesome. All <laughs> right, Norm, thank you All right, so Chiron. much. Take care and I will talk to you later. Thanks for hosting me. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.